All right. Well, welcome. Hi. Hello, Karen. Thanks for being here. I know I um, said it in um, the behind the scenes, but your hair is adorable. Thank you. I, I really, really like it. I'm, I'm During the it. pandemic, um, and I wasn't going to the hairdresser. And so it was like, I got to do something to perk things up. <laughs> and I started then. That's when I started. Fortunately, I'd had the the semi-permanent for a couple of years and just never had the guts to do it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was like, I'm doing it tonight. <laughs> Why not? Why not? So you have several different series. I do. Well, you have the, 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 the two cozy mysteries, but then you've also write a, a lot of romance too. So, um, I can do it, especially the Daisy, but I always think that you guys are going to talk about your books way better than I would. So if you would you want to give a short synopsis of kind of what Daisy's Tea Garden Mystery Series is and the Caprice? Okay, let's start with Caprice. Okay. <laughs> because um, she's a home stager. But <laughs> when I developed the series, I had to put elements in that would keep me alive and sparking and that kind of thing. So she takes in stray animals and finds home for them. Nice. And the funny thing is we had two cats at the time, but as soon as I started envisioning that, we now have seven. Oh, <laughs> oh my. So, you know, one, <laughs> one appeared in our backyard, a little one and a half pound one, and then a pregnant one appeared in our yard. So it's like, you create it, you got it. But anyway, so she's my alter ego. I love her uh, because I grew up in the 60s. So she likes retro fashion, yeah. retro music, retro design. Um, she has a big Italian family. I come from both sides, Italian. Um, and they always try to give her advice. Okay. And, <laughs> and they cook together. And so I just love her. And she home stages. I was... Um, I sold home interiors and gifts uh, for a few years oh, and decorated cool. people's homes in my past life. Um, <laughs> so she embodies my alter ego. She's who I want to be. <laughs> gotcha. Now, is Quiet Kismet a place? Uh, Kismet is a fictional town near York where I grew up. So that way... You know, I could delve into York and I'd have every place there that I wanted. But yet I always like to create fictional towns because mm -hmm. I can put in them what I want in them. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And Daisy, um, Daisy is more like my mother's side. Uh, more real in that sense. Um, she deals with two teenage daughters. I wanted to do a totally different com from Caprice. Mm -hmm. And... I also wanted to make it a little quirky. So she and her aunt, her name's Daisy. Her aunt's name is Aunt Iris. All the women in her family have flower names. Her daughter's name is Jazzy for Jasmine and Violet Vi. And her mom's name is Rose. And her sister's name is Cabelia. <laughs> um, and then she has a tea garden with her aunt mm -hmm. in a fictional town called Willow Creek, which is in Amish country. Mm -hmm. It's in Lancaster County. And I did that because... Again, I wanted something totally different, but I wanted to be familiar with it. I think when you're intimate with a setting, it comes through in your books. Um, so I've always had access to Lancaster and we've always gone down to Lancaster um, and Burden Hand and Paradise and Intercourse and all the little Amish shops. And I just mm -hmm. love their crafts. So you'll see a lot of that in the series. The second book, um, Murder of Cinnamon Scones, Quilts is a big part of, mm -hmm. plays a big part in the mystery. So I like to cook. Oh, and Caprice has three, mis uh, three recipes in every book, two. Uh, some Italian, some not. More complicated than some of the Daisy ones. And then in Daisy, I wanted to keep them simpler mm -hmm. um, so that the tea garden could whip them up anytime and keep them going. Um, and also with all the recipes, um, some, some I get right away, some it takes me 10 tries to get. And after I do, then my husband has to make it so I know anybody can make it without my help. <laughs> without my help. That's smart. <laughs> Very smart. 
<laughs> and both series, they have bows, they have boyfriends, and um, in Caprice, she gets married in the eighth book. Um, Daisy is still in progress. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> yeah, I... I finished reading book five in Daisy. You have seven books in Daisy. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love them. I, and I, and I've said this on, um, hello, everybody coming in. Um, hello, Kay. I can put up the things cause I know you can't see them. So okay. hello, Kay. It's nice to see you. Hello, Victoria. Great to have you. Just Hi, Sarah. everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, so, I, I think I've read through five now and I absolutely love them. And I, I enjoy reading. It's so funny that I enjoy reading all the Amish books that I do because I grew up in an um, Amish community in Arcola, Illinois. Okay. Which is very like Arcola, Arthur, if you've ever heard of it, it's very, very large Amish community there. I was not Amish. Um, <laughs> Cause that's always the next question that you get, but it's always interesting to, I didn't think I'd like Amish books because sometimes you see such inaccuracies like you said, I feel like you have to know the area, even when you know the area. I was talking, the last author I, that I interviewed, I thought they said some really interesting things about really knowing your setting. Because even people who, you know, have been to New York, when you say city, they don't say that really in New York. They just say Manhattan. They don't say go into the city, apparently. You know what I mean? I wouldn't mm -hmm. have known that. I, I've never, I don't know that. You know, and I feel like that's a, kind of the same way, just different words um, that, that people use for different things if you're really in the know. And, um, I think feeling like, you know, your setting, I think is a big, um, I think it, I think it comes through, like you said, I really do. Um, and, it, and the Amish, um, are different in different areas too, as far yeah. as the words you use and that type mm -hmm. of thing. But like in this area, I think everybody knows what Rumspringa means. Yeah. 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 The, the time true. when Amish teenagers find out whether they want to stay in the Amish faith or not. Mm -hmm. And there's just something about the Amish faith. I grew up Catholic um, that attracts me. Um, just the faith, family values, and especially community, which I don't think we have much now. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of helping each other. And so the Amish traditions aren't a huge part of the Daisy Mysteries, but they flavor each one, some more than others. In mm -hmm. fact, I just got a synopsis approved um, for our book nine, and it's going to be about twin sisters, one who stayed in the Amish faith and one who didn't. So I'm looking forward to writing that. That's so funny because I was telling somebody on a let. So Amish in April starts yesterday, I don't know if you know what that is, but uh -huh. um, it's like a um, some some YouTube channels on on YouTube created this. It's just Amish in April. And um, it's like a two week period. And they created these prompts where like, you try to get like, um, so many Amish books read, and it would be like, um, cozy could be one so you could read yeah. you know daisy tea garden and then contemporary and then country there's all these all of them are c words so it's like country <laughs> but and 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 they have a real cute like horse and buggy on there and everything and you try to get like basically like tic-tac-toe okay. it's just fun and then everybody kind of talks about what they're doing and i was saying that your your books could be could be used for that on on my channel a lot of people were talking about what they were going to read and i was saying oh there's some you know um, of aspects of, um, and there's an Amish care, you know, and different things that come through mm -hmm. in the, in the, in the Daisy series. Well, her, her childhood friend, her mm -hmm. childhood best friend was Amish. But when, um, yeah. but when I was doing a live, we had twin Amish in my class and okay. I was telling somebody because they were identical. And of course they wore some days they, I mean, they were so identical that they, and their hairs, of course, pulled back in the prayer bonnet. And they, they were Lenora May and Lindora Fay. That's and funny because my two are Lydia and <laughs> I just went blank. They're both L's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lydia so, and Leah. Lydia and Leah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there was Lenora, but I mean, these were real, you know, girls in my class. And one of them was Lindora Fay was extremely mean. And when we Aww. were real young, 
when we were real young, like first, second grade, they look so much alike. They always, of course, had the prayer bonnets on, you know, and their hair, you know. And so, but the, the, the they were the same size and they could wear the same dresses. So mm-hmm. they would switch. So as soon as Lindora Faye would come up, she'd pinch you or something. We do like a telephone. We're like, oh, stay away from green dress, green dress. Green dress. <laughs> it was like an alert, like through the all of the classroom. <laughs> she was always so mean. It's funny, it's funny now, but. I so, just got advanced copies on orange Pico tea. I don't know if you can see it. I love this cover. Oh, lift oh, nice. Here, let me take this one off. Hold on one second. There, no, let you're good. Take- you're good. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And I actually have that teapot. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's I, I the the covers on on cozies, uh, you know, are so great. So does the same artist do all of your covers? I don't think so. Um, it's a Kensington artist. And okay. I, if you notice, the Caprice covers are very different. Um, they're busier. Let's put it that mm-hmm. way. But they include all the aspects and the colors are gorgeous. I think my favorite one is um, Sleigh Bell's Ring. I just love that cover. And that cover has a little cabin on it that was our Santa cabin in Hanover, PA for years and years and years that my husband and son went to. And I sent him a picture of that because it's in the mystery. And they put that on the cover along oh, with the yes. dog. <laughs> um so yeah, they I send them ideas or he'll ask me, you know, what do you think? And I'll send some pictures. And always a teapot. So this one I said this teapot and they put it on the cover. And I just love the colors on this cover. Yeah, I do too. It almost looks a little folly. I don't know if it's meant to, but that's Father. like my favorite color scheme. So I really wow. that was the very, yeah. very pretty. Um so so along with the covers, do you send like um, different ideas for title and then they? Well, with Caprice, yes. Um, and we went for the cover, co- yeah, titles like Cut to the Chase and my agent would come up with one. He came up with Silence of the Lamps. Which I love. <laughs> and, um, my editor came up with a couple and actually my husband came up with cut to the chase and that just, that was, that worked. So <laughs> it's much easier with the Daisy books. <laughs> yeah. Harder with. <laughs> um, and I just do a different kind of tea mm-hmm. and talk about the history and what it is in each book. Yeah. Yeah. So you said that you are, for sure, writing through book nine. Is that correct? In the Daisy I'll series? I'll be starting book nine next week. Oh yeah. my gosh. That's yeah. awesome for readers. I'm so excited to hear that. And then Caprice has how many books in it? And are you oh. slated to write more? I'd like to, but I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, book sales are very iffy right now um, because of mortar, brick and mortar bookstores closing, and especially for mysteries. Um, so it's iffy. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see, you know, um, I'd like to, but <laughs> and we'll see if Daisy keeps going for now. There'll be 10. Um, oh. yeah, I, I got it. I just got a new contract for two for nine and 10. Um, so we'll see. And if not, there'll be a new one. <laughs> yeah. I have trouble letting go. I have trouble letting go of the characters. I'm that way as a reader. I have trouble letting go of the characters. We were talking um, about that. We have like a cozy mystery chat on Discord. And um, we were talking about how sometimes if we know a series goes seven books, you know, and you're on book seven, Mm -hmm. we'll wait to try to read it. Like hold out because we just don't want the characters to end. Or the I like to read all of them at once too. Yeah. And, and, not those last ones, but like if I find a book of, of a series of six, you know, I like to read them one after the other. Yeah. So do you read a lot of cozy mysteries? No, I read. Um, my agent gave me advice a long time ago that you should always read a level above what you write. So when I wrote romances, I mostly read. I, I have trouble with my eyes. So I do most of my reading on audiobooks. Me too. Um, so back then, I would do women's fiction rather than romance. 
So now I mostly read thrillers, psychological thrillers. I love Harlan Coben. Um, I'm, li I'm listening to Lisa Jewell right now, yeah. um, The Silent Victim. That, that's the type of thing I listen to or read. Because, yeah. and I really miss like Michael Palmer and Vince Flynn um, who have passed because they used to keep me up to date and all the tech stuff. <laughs> I would read them for research too. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. What an interesting advice too from your from your your agent. You said that's mm -hmm. really that's really interesting. So, hello, Cheryl. Cheryl um, has read like nine hundred. No joke. Like nine hundred cozy mysteries. Wow. I've never I've never met somebody who's read more. And I mean, there are several people that have read. I mean, a substantial amount. I know another girl's read like six hundred crazy numbers, but Cheryl. Yeah. I mean, she, she's a, she's a cozy mystery aficionado. Hi storm. A couple, a couple every day. <laughs> <laughs> Hello storm. Hello romance queen. Hello everybody. That is a great anecdote to use in a story. The mean twin. I know. Kensington rocks. I agree. I think that they're um, publishing house for cozy mysteries. Right, currently, right now, them and Crooked Lane are just fantastic. They rock for, they rock for auth authors too. They Dude, really do because, cool. yeah, they'll before I have a new book coming out, they'll put one on sale. In fact, Stage to Death, the first Caprice book, is on sale now on Kindle for a dollar ninety nine. That's good to know because I so an hour after this airs, after it finishes, and then like processes, I can change the description. So at that point. I can add, I always put in your website, but I can add in those sort of things and I can put a link to, to that. that I sale. think the last two books, um, Slay Bells Ring and Cut to the Chase might be on sale for Dar 99 too. I'm not nice. positive about that. So That's awesome. Yeah. It's great when they put the first book in the series on sale because then people will pick up more of them. Yes, because if you're neurotic, like most people who read series, let's just face it, you don't want to start a series and then, you know, you want to start at book one. I, yeah. I'm, the way you. I'm, I'm in the in the fray. Murder with Lemon Tea Cakes um, made the USA Today list also. I'm not surprised. I really, I really that. love that series. And the oh, it's it's really great. Oh, Thank you, Victoria. So yeah, 10, 10 books in a series is quite an issue. That's me. I binge read. Yeah. <laughs> I like Harlan Coben, Lisa Howard, and Mary Higgins Clark. I started with Mary Higgins Clark. Um, I didn't read Cozy's before I wrote one, but I used to read her books all the time, which are eh, kind of in between. Is that um, the, that's the mom, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, and I always loved her. I always get them mixed up. <laughs> I always loved her books. <clears throat> I mean, when I was a kid, I read Mary Stewart and Glenna Finley, and which had mystery suspense in with the romance. It's been a long time. <laughs> I've been reading since 1986. Wow. So um, my first book was published in 1992. Wow. So did you always want to be a writer? Um, that's my friend. <laughs> we will try and ignore it. <laughs> um, I was always good at writing and I loved reading and I wrote poetry when I started and essays for like the newspaper and in the literary magazine. In college, I majored in English and French. So I had creative writing, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And I started a novel with the Beatles as my heroes oh my God, <laughs> when, amazing. I, when I was in college. Um, but then, you know, life interferes. And I wanted to be an, a language interpreter for the UN, you know. Oh. But then I met my husband and other things happened. Um, but then in 1986, I had back surgery and I was flat on my back for four years. And wow. up to that time, I had been heavily into exercise, swimming, biking, aerobics, everything. 
And so all that energy had to go into something to get the mm -hmm. stress out and for a creative outlet. So I started writing short stories that became too long to publish. So I thought, why not a book? And I always read Harlequins, always read Harlequins. So it took six years and 13 manuscripts before I got published. And then I sold two in one week. Wow. Two publishers. Isn't that crazy? Like you work, yeah, you work that hard and you keep getting all these, you know, and then all of a sudden they just start flowing in. But, yeah. you know, I think that's a testament to keep writing if you want to do it. I mean, I don't have a desire to write. I'm like, people always tell me because I keep floating out an idea to cozy mystery authors. Here's an idea, mm -hmm. uh, Karen, use it at your will. I really want to see a cozy mystery series of a traveling carnival. I feel like there's a thousand ways to kill somebody. It'd be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Covers. There could yeah. be really fun covers or an amusement park. Take it as you wish. I would love for the first book to be like, you know, killed in the tunnel of love. Like they go in and it's supposed to be a happy <laughs> couple and they come out. One head. I mean, come on. So, um, but someone's like, just write it yourself. I was like, oh no, no, no. I'm happy as a reader. But I think that's a good testament for people who want to write that like, look how long, but now look, you know. Um, I don't know if back then, if there had been self-publishing, if I would have or not. Um, it was so different. It was so different because you would take, if you got rejected, there were three other publishers to try and you would take any criticism and put it into the rewrite or whatever. You know, it was just very different. Mm -hmm. um, but fortunately they kept buying from me. I was writing four to five uh, romances a year at one time. Wow. That's incredible. Now, no. <laughs> now, Two mysteries a year keep me busy. It's just, well, first of all, mysteries are, oh, I hate to say more challenging, but that's what they are. It's more like a puzzle. You know, you have to put together, oh. you've got to get those threads and they're longer. I'm doing 80,000 words now, um, which takes a lot more time to edit, um, you know, and make corrections and that kind of thing. And I'm a perfectionist. So a book doesn't go in until I've read it five times, you know, to make sure. And I still mess up, you know, oh, it, wow. it happens. I don't just mean typos, but, you know, <coughs> maybe it's getting older. My mind doesn't work the same way. I don't know. But yeah, so I go over and over and over it. I start out with a detailed synopsis. That's very, what I was going to ask you. So you're not a pantser. No, because I have a lot of physical <laughs> issues arthritis, fibromyalgia, that kind of thing. So that doesn't mean I always feel like writing. Well, it's not a matter of feeling like writing. I have a synopsis. I have it broken down into scenes per chapter. I sit down and I write. Wow. So really detailed outline. That's interesting. I've always done it that way. Yeah. Uh -huh. That keeps my word count um, on par too. I can tell, you know, I, I'm a very efficient writer. I don't like having to add or subtract. I like to get it right the first time. <laughs> sort of like when cutting wood, you know, <laughs> measure, <laughs> measure gotcha. once, you don't saw, saw twice. Uh, but yeah. Gotcha. So do you <clears throat> write under any other name? When I started with, um, with the two different publishers, I wrote under Carrie Sutherland for Harlequin and Karen Rose Smith for Meteor. But then after Meteor went out of business, my Carrie Sutherland books were changed to Karen Rose Smith. Okay. So now it's just Karen Rose Smith. So Carrie Sutherland, did that name come from somewhere? I always like to ask when you have pen names, if it's just like, no, is no. It no? no, now if I chose a name, it would, but back then it was just something pretty. And if I had been smarter, it wouldn't have started with an S. It would have started with a, a, B, or C. <laughs> oh, that's you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a really good tidbit too. You know, you don't think about those those things, or I don't as a you know as a reader. But I think that's smart because when I go into a bookstore, I start alphabetically when I go to whatever you know the section. So that's in huh. Yeah, and I did do indie publishing for a while. Oh. Um, I took 
titles that had been with Harlequin, three of them, and started with them, rewrote, changed, and then added original titles also. And it was called The Search for Love series. That's on Kindle. And that's everything from pure romance to women's fiction. A little bit of all of them mixed in. Mm -hmm. And it has a paranormal element through it. Wow. That's interesting. That was fun. It was fun writing. But I couldn't. I'm frozen. Not do. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Alexa wasn't working either. I tried to put um, her to call my husband. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> it happens. You know, that's one of the things with relying on technology now, you know, I and mean, yeah. sometimes you're at the, the mercy of the cyber gods. <laughs> we were talking about Indian traditional. I couldn't. Because when I first started writing, I wrote 90% of the time. Now, promotion takes up 60% of the time at least. Wow. Just be between Facebook, Twitter, a couple of times a day, um, that, you know, and putting that together. It's not always as simple as posting a picture and writing a tag for it. Instagram, um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a pretty big statistic. I wouldn't have guessed that. And I mean, that's, how, that's how I wrote four to five romances a year. I didn't do anything else. That's what I did. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> you do any of the conferences like Malice or, or anything? Not anymore. I used to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, when I was writing romances, I decided research trips were more important than conferences. Um, because I've always believed to learn to write better, you have to write. So, um, <laughs> on, the, on the one research trip, um, we went to Wyoming for the wild horses oh. and I did a three book series, a romance series with them. I had been to Albuquerque, um, and in one book, I had the hero and heroine make a pilgrimage to this small church called Shamayo that's near Albuquerque, and I wanted to see it and go there. Um, so we did that. I love Santa Fe. I love Sedona. Those are just my favorite places. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. I think it takes... Yeah, I, I think that that makes the book feel. I, 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 like I said, when I feel like the more research done on a setting, you can tell. And for me, I've, I've, I, cozy mysteries are. So it's so funny that you're saying cozy mysteries and romance because I probably read seventy five percent cozy mysteries and twenty five percent romance. I really don't read much else. Every once in a great while, I'll read something that may be declared more of like a women's lit sort of sort of thing. Um, I used to read way more, but when I discovered what I liked, it just made more sense to read what I like as opposed to mm -hmm. kind of, picking, you know, and you never know yeah. what you're going to hit. But, um, I did not, I forgot what I was going to say, um, about the, oh, for me, the, the cozy mysteries, although I love the mystery aspect, it's really secondary for me. What I keep reading the series for is the characters and the setting. Like I want to see what's going on in with, with Daisy at the tea garden or, you know, in, um, Amish country, you know, whatever. Um, I, I've been criticized, um, in Daisy. I intentionally made it part cozy, part women's fiction. Cause that's where my writing lies. Mm -hmm. And I've been criticized for that. Well, it's not just a mystery, you know, 
Um, but my life is filled with relationships. And I think everybody's lives are filled with relationships. And I think my readers identify with what's going on while my sleuth is solving a mystery. Um, for instance, in the one book, uh, Clotted Cream, uh, Daisy's daughter has postpartum depression. I went through that as a new mother. Very different now. And I wanted to show that. Um, things like that. I, I just think women readers enjoy that. Yeah, I like to laugh and I like the humor and I hope I have warm humor in them. Um, and I have a lot of mystery in it. I mean, but the mysteries delve back into relationships that cause the motives for the murders. Yeah, I agree. And I, I prefer my books to be that way. So it's so funny that, you know, it just goes to show people, you know, people like different things, you know, I mean, of course, mm -hmm. but um, hmm. I mean, I, that's one of the reasons I read so many cozy mysteries is the, is the getting to see what even the mundane stuff. Somebody said that I'm like, you know, that's so true. Like, what is Daisy making today? Oh, cute conversation. I don't know. Like the, the, it feels comfortable. It feels cozy, mm -hmm. like, you know, to, um, and you get to know the people in the, in, in the settings. Do you think that you would make a good sleuth? I would make a good sleuth on paper, on the, <laughs> on the investigative part of it, not the running around part, <laughs> not the going to <clears throat> people I don't know and questioning them. I would, I was raised Catholic. I was raised in a traditional home. You know, it's very hard still for me to be assertive sometimes. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah, I would not either though. I, I mean, <laughs> on anywhere, paper or, or in the sense like, I, first of all, I'm a scaredy cat. So I'd be under the table. Like you can find me there. Like well, when she goes through like the lawsuits online to find which one's connected with the person who was murdered that I could do. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm just, I'm not, I never figure out the killer. Um, I just, yeah, you know, I, I've been saying this for a while, but my my strategy now is I just suspect everyone because then I'm right. Yeah, <laughs> I got nothing uh, else. Like in the new synopsis, um, I don't know if it's too obvious who the murderer is, but well, I've never done obvious. Do you know what I mean? I've I never like narrow it down to two people, and one of them is it. I've never done that. Mm -hmm. So this time we'll see. <laughs> I, you'll be fine. If, as far as my read, you'll still be okay. I'll, I'll guess the other person. So it's okay. Uh, Cheryl said, yeah, the same thing. If I don't connect to the characters, I'm pretty much done with the series. Honestly, mm -hmm. me too. That's uh, like, I started reading Harlan Coben when I started reading him years ago. He was the first man I read, because I always read women up till then, who got women who got relationships <laughs> six or seven or something. So that's why, but, and now there's a lot of men who write women well, but that's, uh, that's what I look for. The relationships. Yeah, I agree. It's one of the reasons I, when I read women's lit that attracted me, you know, I mean, uh -huh. yeah, absolutely. Victoria said, I read the series because I want to see what happens next in the car li characters lives. Me too. Yeah. I mean, that is the, the, Number one draw for me too. I love the details in the book. I do too. A lot of people, the criticisms I think that you're talking about are the things that I love. That's so in, in the Caprice series, she is a home stager. So I go into a lot of detail about the homes she goes into and, and what she stages. And it's not just ordinary homes. Um, she stages high end homes and then her sister's a caterer. So they do this whole production. Uh, if you've ever watched Million Dollar Listing or any of those shows, um, like they'll pick a theme. And the one was a Southern theme with pie safes. And <clears throat> that's the kind of furniture they had in the house. So she laid out a whole Southern meal. Um, oh. The one was a German theme. So she laid out a whole German meal, that type of thing. And it, it's very different that way. It's not just staging ordinary homes and getting rid of some clutter. So I go into detail on the descriptions in the houses and in her parties. Um, it's just part of the series. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I, and I think that there's going to be people, no matter what somebody writes, there's going to be people that love it. And there's going to be people that are, right. you know, don't like that at one aspect or the other, you know, um, because there's things that in cozies that I don't like that I'm sure other people, you know, that might be their favorite thing. So, you know, I think that's going to be in anybody's writing for anything, mm-hmm. no matter what the, you know, is. genre is. So if you were murdered, gosh forbid, knock on wood, let's all knock on wood. Who would you want to solve be on your case? Hmm. TV detective or book detective? I don't know if you've ever watched the Netflix series, The Sinner. No. And it's a little gritty, mm-hmm. but it fascinates me. <laughs> and I, would, I would want the detective, and I don't know his real name. His name's Harry on there. Okay. I would want him to solve my case because he doesn't give up. Interesting. Even if it seems on the surface to be something it isn't, he doesn't give up. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I always go back to Columbo. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I just love him because people always think he's such a bumbling fool, but he knows exactly what he's doing. And I, I don't know. like that. He's older, and the young detectives look at him like, you know, why are you even bothering with this? Yeah. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, is, is that a Netflix like on right now, like a next Netflix original? No, I think it was a USA okay. original, yeah. but it's on Netflix now. There's three seasons of it. Okay. We're in the third season and I have to stop myself from watching the whole thing at one time because <laughs> we do like one episode each night. So we stretch it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. There's so many, like, it's interesting to me how many people don't know sometimes what a cozy mystery is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, I'll say, well, you know, have you ever seen Murder, She Wrote? Like, I feel like that's, like, yes, something that's that true. everybody oh, can that. relate to. Yeah. Everybody's probably saw an episode you know, or somewhere along the way with her grandma or something, you know, I remember watching it because my grandmother would have it on, you know, stuff like that when I was real young. But I, now I think, man, how is Cabot Cove not like infested with FBI or something? Like we need to be re figuring out what's going on in this little bitty town. Like (laughs) that's like Willow Creek, you know, we're up to seven murders. (laughs) Well, yes. Sometimes I do think that I'm like, okay, I have to suspend it because I, you know, I think that I'm like, wow. Yeah. You just, you know, the town only has 800 people. What's good? (laughs) But, you know, I've, I've come to the conclusion that if I'm somewhere and Miss Jessica Fletcher shows up, I'm just leaving out an abundance of caution. (laughs) Like I'm just, somebody's going down and I don't want it to be me. That's what I know. So, uh, Again, the scaredy cat in me is out the door. Like, but um, that's interesting. I'll have to check that one out. I have not heard of of that show. Hmm. I do think I would want somebody that wouldn't give up. You know, like I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so people are like, yeah, it's a it's a cold case. Like, I don't, you know. And I was I was never into historical um, cozies either. But we watched Miss Scarlet. Have you watched that? Uh. Uh-uh. Oh, that's good too. She's it's oh, I don't know the time frame, but it's back in England. Um, maybe 30s, 40s. Okay. 30s or 40s. And she inherits her father's private eye firm. And you know, it's a woman doing this, which it shouldn't be back then. Um, <laughs> so that's that's cute too. I think the second season is on now. Okay. I do like, um, and it's historical father Brown. I do like father Brown. I've never watched that. Yeah. I enjoy, I enjoy father Brown a lot. And of course he's a priest. Um, Would you remember the, um, was it Downing street? Father Dowling. Yeah. I I love that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I loved it. We were talking about that last week. I really liked that show too. Um, there was a lot of good old ones that I like when I, when, it's just nice when um, it, it, it's a good kind of idea for people for cozy mysteries when they don't know what they are. Well, you know, check out Miss Marple or Murder, She Wrote. And, you know, it's kind of 
kind of the same vein. Um, I, I always like the medical one too. Oh yeah. Like diagnosis, diagnosis murder. That was a favorite yep. of mine. And Quincy. Um, I never seen and Quincy I love Quincy. Michael Palmer. Um, uh, I would sit and watch Quincy's over again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lee said, "What well, I love when authors go into detail, staging home, decorating a hotel. It's those details that make the book for me. Me too, Lee. I 100% agree. 100% agree. Cheryl said, research must take, yes, quite a bit of time. I would it does. I, I like to write what I know for part of the book, but then there's always part that I need to do research on. Whether it's medical, um, in the first Caprice book, she stages a house that's like a castle. Oh. And so I had to look into all the new finishes and that type of thing that could be used on there. And it's a Camelot theme in the first stage to death. Nice. And that's what they use when they have the open house, the Camelot with the guy in buckskins. And <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. So the medical stuff takes a lot of time. So when you research, I'm assuming, you know, you go to those places, like you were talking about going to Southwest and everything, and then you probably do some on your computer. I always ask this, would we, would we, between your bookshelves and your computer search, think that you may be a serial killer if we checked your computer? Do you have, do That's you have, possible. does your searches have like eight ways to like, you know, poison somebody? <laughs> Easily. No, but I have two volumes on poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a stack of books for mystery research, you know, from cr <coughs> crime scenes to whatever. Yeah, so we were. I still <laughs> like real books. I still like real books for research. Um, if I can order a book on Amazon and, and use it for research, because I like to mark it up and highlight and... Oh. You know, otherwise I have to print out everything. <laughs> from the computer. You know, it's like, I'd rather just have the book and go to what I want. Sticky notes, highlighters. <laughs> old school. Old school, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I do. Um, my son's a chemist. Um, oh. Uh, so, and actually he's working on the vaccine now and I'm really proud of him. Wow, um, that's incredible. Uh, oh. But so I can get some of the medical stuff through him and his friends. <laughs> One of his friends, a biochemist. And so uh, when I used Oleander in one of the Caprice books, um, I went to them about, you know, effects and that kind of thing. Yeah. Interesting. Are any of your characters, I know you said that Caprice is a lot like you. Or that's who you would want to be. <laughs> wanna, <Yeah>. wanna be. <laughs> um, are any of your characters in any of your books like based off real people? No. No. I can say that absolutely not. Now, <laughs> I take situations and things that have happened with people and use those. Um, but no, I, because. I like to create a character from scratch because I know the inner workings of their mind. I'd hate to have someone say, Oh, that's me. And then mm, <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> <You know? clears throat> so yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> I think that as a like mystery writer, I, you know, probably kill off some character people that, you know, in a, in a oh, fiction. I do that. <clears throat> I do that. <laughs> you just don't recognize the character. <laughs> Bye, romance. She, she's probably gone, but yes, it was nice to see you. Cheryl said, I've read some of <clears throat> Michael Palmer's earlier books. I do not know who that is. He's a medical thriller writer. I love his stuff. His son, Daniel, now writes um, mainstream fiction thrillers. Oh, and my husband reads um, <clears throat> medical thrillers that are by Robin Cook. Cook. Very different. Robin Cook? Oh, okay. That's okay. 
much more clinical. Okay. Michael Palmer's relate more to the relationships with the characters. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't, I don't read anything like that. I find it interesting, but I also like sleep and I am no joke. My shadow can scare me. So I have to really, <laughs> really watch what I um, read and just watch on TV. You know, even like when I get on Netflix, if there's like an advertisement of some scary movie, I'm like, why do they do that? Because what if I was a child? I would, I'm not a child and I'm still traumatized. Don't do that. No, I agree. Michael Palmer's aren't like that. Um, okay. If you've seen the trailer for Rebel, that's no. going to be a new series. Mm. And she investigates why heart valves um, are killing patients. That's more like what Michael Palmer's are about. Interesting. And yeah. he even did one about the, I think it's called, it was about the president. He was the doctor to the president. That came out about five or six years ago. That was uh, longer than that now. That was really good. <clears throat> so both of your series, one, the Capri series has much more in-depth recipes. And you were just saying you had big German dinner, big, you know, at these stagings. Do you cook a lot? Or, oh, are you in, what's that? Yeah. Cooking, gardening, and cats. <laughs> 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 are my three hobbies. Um, with the physical stuff, winter is rough for me. Um, because I don't move around as much. So I start seeds for petunias, snapdragons, and then heirloom tomatoes, like February, March, and take them through till the summer. And my husband plants them, <laughs> but I grow a lot of my own flowers. I plant my own zinnia seeds and um, it's good therapy. Um, I spend a lot of time on the patio in the summer. I tape, I don't write. All my books are taped and then a typist transcribes them Oh, because of my neck and shoulder issues. Um, so I'll sit out there and have bird song on the tape while I'm taping for her. You know, I'll say, Terry, don't worry. It's just birds. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. That's a, yeah. See, I that's used to write at night under the moon. I used to go out every night while the weather permitted. Um, and did that my, once my husband retired, writing was an issue because I was alone for 40 years all day with the cats to write. <laughs> once he retired, we're together 24 hours a day. So, um, I was writing mostly at night, which I wasn't getting much sleep because of that. I did several books that way and just decided, oh, this isn't working. So now um, I go upstairs to the to my bedroom upstairs with my tape recorder and my cats, and in the morning, and most in the morning, and right then, and he leaves me alone that way because he's all over the house. Uh, I have one of those husbands who's type A, and he does the wash and he vacuums, and I love him to death and mows the grass, but. <clears throat> When I'm taping, it doesn't work so well. <laughs> and the pandemic has been really tough because at least he used to go run errands. You know, <laughs> well, I would have a couple hours at a time that way. <laughs> and, oh my God. This has been a little tougher. <laughs> you know, I think that that's relatable for a ton of people. A ton of people. Even the first part, because I'll tell you that um, my – one of my in-laws as um, not recently retired. I think it's been about a year now, but she's like, I never get any reading done because he won't <laughs> leave me alone because he, you know, and uh, you know, but, but and then the pandemic, I think, you know, a lot of people um, I hear my colleagues at work and everything. They're like, I didn't realize my husband did this. And I was making a joke the other day my <laughs> that he hadn't seen some movie and we've been together. Well, we'll be married 15 years this year, but we were together quite a few years before we got married. And I, 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 I sent a message to a friend of mine and I was like, I think I'm sleeping next to a stranger. My husband has never <laughs> seen sister act. And it was just like, um, you know, but I think that the pandemic for a lot of people, they're like, I never knew my husband did X, Y, and Z or Y for, you know, both or, you know, yeah. my partner in general. And I'm just like, that's hilarious. Yeah. And I mean, the amount of time that, you know, people are spending together is. I mean, we were used to being 
together since he retired. So, and we'll be married 50 years this summer. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, we're used to being together, but the pandemic just intensified that. Yeah. 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 It took For me about, sure. it took me about four years to get used to him being retired. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I think it's so funny when people, yeah. Yeah. Cheryl said, I'm a fellow cat lover. I've had a cat in my life since I was a baby. Awesome. Yeah. Seven have taken over our lives. So I'm you not currently sure. have seven cats. Yep. Um, two of them have been coming for five years, but they're still feral to a certain extent. Um, They'll go out a couple hours and they'll come in and stay in for the rest of the day in the basement. They're separated from the rest of our cats um, just because. <laughs> and they've just always been independent like that. And it's taken this long to be able to pet him. He's a yellow tabby and she's a tortie and we still can't pet her. They run. Like if I sit in a particular chair by his food dish, He'll come over and lay next to my shoes so I can pet him. If I stand up, he runs. If he's anywhere else, then I bend down and he'll run. So they're still, they had a terrible experience in a trap release program, is my guess, because they were both clipped. Their ears were clipped when we found them. Um, we had taken care of a cat who had F FIV one summer, and he led them to our property because we had a feeder out at the time. So once they were using the feeder, um, they lived under the neighbor's porch for a year, wouldn't come, wouldn't come in, wouldn't eat for us. Um, and then finally, two years, I drew them into the basement with food. And then we put a cat door in the storm door and we still couldn't go near them. They'd come eat, 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 leave again. <laughs> so this is year five and they'll go out in the morning, come in around noon and stay in for the day. Wow. Five years. Yeah. And now the others. The other five, <clears throat> we took in a pregnant mom and we kept <laughs> one of her babies and get found homes for two. She lived in my office for three months <laughs> and then she integrated and we adopted the newest ones, kittens, who will be three, but still act like kittens and they're mm -hmm. long hairs. I've <laughs> So much more cat fur and dust, um, but I love them. And I was going through a tough time and a friend found six kittens under her porch and we made the mistake of visiting. <laughs> and I was going to go home with one little black one and she was bonded to her brother. So we came home with two. So that makes five inside up here and two downstairs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's a lot. That's yeah. But they keep me moving. They True. keep me laughing. Absolutely. That's one Absolutely. right now. She wants out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa called the bedroom. <laughs> that's funny. Cheryl said right now I just have one cat, one baby girl. Aw. Um, so are, are you thinking about if, Bedroom. Steve doesn't care. I know you're, you know, what's that? Karen's bedroom. That's Alexa talking. <laughs> she thinks I called her name. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Were, uh, Alexa, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh that's that's funny. how does the cat, you know? That's a that's that's really funny. So if you um, you know, you were saying you don't know about Caprice and just in general, like I think that you know authors have been saying, and I'm getting the impression that really, you know, maybe two or three books out, but other than that, they don't know long term what's going to happen with their series, which I guess makes sense. I I mean, I didn't realize that. I just figured you wrote till you wanted to be done, but no, I, I get it. I know. Yeah. No. And I get it now, but I didn't know that before. But do you have um, other idea that you would want to do for a cozy mystery? I mean, not that you can really say, mm -hmm. but do you have some that you're like scoping out? Not yet. Um, simply because 
I came up with an idea before the Daisy series. And, but my editor said, how about a T series? <laughs> so I switched lanes, you know, and, and did that. So I kind of wait and see what he might want because they know what sells. Yeah. Well, if it's a traveling carnival, I'm just saying. <laughs> There is a carnival. I feel like there is a cozy mystery. There is a cozy mystery for everything. Yeah. Everything has a cozy mystery. So why not a traveling carnival? And you could kill them a ton of different ways. Yep. Cute covers. I agree. Eventually. <laughs> eventually. I'd have, to, I'd have to research traveling carnivals. Yeah. Well, that would be fun. Have to know somebody in the business. <laughs> I mean, that would that would be fun. Just spend a you know a, a certain amount of time just going to different carnivals in different areas. That'd we be fun. That. When our son was small, we used to do that. Yeah. yeah, they're big around here. I use one in Daisy's book. One of Daisy's books. Um, they put them up in the school grounds, mm -hmm. or fire hall grounds. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, I think, I think that no matter where you go or where you live, there are something that like that, that comes to your area. So there again, mm -hmm. it could be set place in anywhere. It could. And that's, that's the other thing. If I would do another series after Daisy, where would I want to put it? Um, my inclination is Flagstaff because I love Flagstaff. Um, I've been there several times. I'm trying to think, you know, that would be interesting. I don't know if I can think of a lot of cozies in that, in that area. Well, that too. And the Grand Canyon is an hour away and Sedona yeah. is an hour away. And I just think it would be exceptional. And ex so shh, don't tell anybody. Okay. I think, I think that um, when, when cozies are, you know, in different locations, I always think that's interesting because the only series that I can think of is um, J.C. Eaton has um, a series that takes place in Sun City, Sun City West or something like that. That's the only cozy I've read in that area at all, which is incredible. Because yeah. I used to love Nevada Bars. Cozy. Oh. You read those? Mm -mm. All of her shit. Her um, sleuth is a park ranger. So they're at different parks in different states and they're really good too. Yeah. Yeah. That would be an interesting so location, really. I think uh -huh. I'd like that. Yeah. I might have to go back there. And yeah, <laughs> do some research and <laughs> absolutely. If we can get on plane. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Oh my goodness. I think everybody's ready for who, you know. Our son's I in Oklahoma. So. He's in Oklahoma, so we haven't seen him over a year. Um and we're hoping we all have our vaccines now. I'm hoping he'll be home in May. I'm still a little yeah. anxious about it, but yeah. Yeah, I think everybody so we um, are in Florida, but we moved from Illinois in 2019 and we haven't been back yet because yeah. of the, of the pandemic. And so we're really hoping we get up North, maybe May is, well, I don't know, September, August, September. I'm not going in the cold. I moved to Florida to not be in the cold anymore. I am not going up North in the cold. So if it's not by October, they can come down and see me or I'll see you next year. <laughs> this is, this is why we read. You know, when um, I started one of the Daisy books, I asked my editor, um, ignore the pandemic. And he said, yes, because yes. most people don't want to read about it. I imagine 10 years from now. And, and actually, we did read about it years ago in some of Robin Cook's books, Coma, um, in some of his <laughs> other pandemic books. I mean, I, it's not something... I want to revisit. I me, I, I really don't either. I just think, and even like the reason I read cozies and not more grittier stuff, I'm like, I can watch the news and see how, how dismal, uh -huh. dismal and, you know, just sad it is. I don't want it in my, in my book, you know, or whatever. And, or, you know, I hear people say, oh, there needs to be 
a little more of this in cozies. And I'm like, no, just keep it the same. Like, I love romance books. If I'm into, you know, if I'm in the mood for something like that, I can go read one of those, but don't change something else. Just to get, you know, I like no, that. I, it's I like find that some things from the last few years entered my cozies in an odd way. <laughs> I don't know how else to I explain it without giving away things. Um, but yeah, they did get in there, but not as they were not as the pandemic, you know, um, maybe in thinking mm. the way people thought some of that, but not in an exact way. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, and even, uh, no, I think that's interesting. Cause even now, um, my friends and I had this big conversation one night about, can you believe the things that we did? that we would never do again because of the pandemic. Like, I got to tell you, I'm never eating a birthday cake again if we blow on it. Like, yeah. the concept yeah. in my mind. Yeah. But we've always done that, right? It was never a thing you thought about blowing out the candles. And now I'm like, oh, what were we thinking? Because, you know, and- I do, I do take things from the news. Um, I did in Orange Pico Tea, the August release. Um, it's about a fertility clinic, some of it. Um, that lost embryos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I take things like that and then weave around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I, that was my concept. I, I usually start with the characters, but this time I started with that and it was easy to come up with suspects and all kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, used to really, um, be into more like reading what was on the the news or just kind of the grittier side. Like I was a huge fan and not that I'm not anymore, but a big fan of Jodi Bacolt. And um, I actually went and met her. And after a release of one of her books, I think it was Sing You Home. I don't know if you're familiar with, yes, with Jodi Bacolt, but uh -huh. um, and she takes, she, she did a speech and then she did a question and answer period. And she said, people said, well, how do you get your ideas? And I remember her saying, like, I literally watched the news and I mm -hmm. picked the topic that would be the most controversial that yeah. ever. <laughs> and that's what I write. And yes, I was, does. yeah. And um, she's an amazing writer. And it's not that I don't, you know, I don't read a lot of her stuff anymore, but it's more just because as I've gotten older, I want the lighter, fluffy. I just want an escape. It's not that those aren't great, but I just feel like between the news and I'm a social worker, you know, I work oh, in wow. social services. So yeah. I hear the worst of the worst all day. And I know this stuff is true. I don't, yeah. don't want to read about it, I guess. So I just I am um, on Twitter. Um, I have lists I follow and I like the idea for the fertility clinic came from there because I'll skim, I'll skim down and like an idea will catch me or an article will catch me and I'll read more about it. Um, mm -hmm. That part of like watching the news, if you will. But um, yeah, I find research. I, I do a lot of research. I follow some epidemiologists and archeologists and so oh, cool. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Things like that and solar system things, because you never know when an idea will spark. Now, there's another thing. And I know, you know, um, Elizabeth Peters has the Amelia Peabody series, but it's older now. I think an archaeologist sleuth would be really fun. Like a archaeologist. And, uh, she, you know, she was a, the main character in that is an Egyptologist in the Amelia Peabody but it's getting a little bit older now. And there might be one that I don't know of, but I think uh, the archaeologist would be really fun or something like um, an astrologist. That would also be a really fun, like um, interesting cozy. Hallmark does a series or they did. I don't know if it's still ongoing with an archaeologist. Really? And, yeah. So I don't remember whose books they are. It's based on someone's books. I did not know that. Yeah, there were at least two of them, if not three. I really like them. Yeah, and I mean, Hallmark's turning all sorts of things into. So I, I, I said I was going to ask you. So I do have to ask you before okay. we go. If 
Hallmark calls you and says, we really want to turn Daisy series into a show, you know, a TV show or the Caprice de Luca. Do you have any ideas for any of the main characters? I uh, like I told you, I have one for Daisy and I can't remember her name, but she's blonde. She's cute. She was on a detective series. Um which I just can't remember the name of for a little bit. He was dapper with a tie and he was a forensic psychologist and she worked for a police department and they worked together, but she, she was blonde and cute and she would bubbly. She'd be my Daisy. Um, I think of what that would be in guys. Um, Jonas, possibly a younger Harry Conniff. Oh, hmm. and I love Grant, Grant was Colin O'Donnell and oh. Caprice. Um, I didn't have anybody specific for her, but I had a picture of someone that I used that I found on the internet. Oh my gosh, Colin love... was in um, Chicago. Met. Okay. I think I know who you're talking about. Not positive, but Harry Conn Jr. I absolutely love, love. <laughs> <laughs> they have to be able to like sing and, you know, dance, play the piano. So like, you know, that's <laughs> part of the charm and package. Um, I'm trying to think the people that I can think of, of the young blonde, there's a show called medium and there's a blonde in that. Yeah. And yes. I don't know if that's who you're thinking it's of. And then there, um, there's no. one that um, the late the girl that is married to Dax Shepard, Kristen somebody. She played in a show for a while, a detective show for a while, something like that. Dead like Dead like me, or I can't remember what it's called. She's also a young cute blonde. Hmm. Interesting. But you're I the have first person. You're the first person that's kind of had any concept in their head. I'm so I was so excited that you had some some ideas. <laughs> I'm telling you, you ne Kristen Bell. Thank you, Kristen Bell, Veronica Mars. That's the other person that I was thinking of. Um, she's married to Dax Shepard. She's a real cute blonde, and she was in Veronica Mars, which is kind of a detective type of thing. Thank you, Victoria. Um, and then the other person I can think of is Medium, and um, she's a she's a blonde. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> and I'm sure what I picture and what my readers picture can be totally different. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that um, I'm sometimes apprehensive about of watching anything after I've read something I really liked. And that's, that's movie or TV show or anything like that, because um, if it's something totally different in my head, like a prime example, and I loved the book, don't get me wrong, was The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. When I first saw the movie and it was Tom Hanks, I love Tom Hanks, but it was not anywhere close mm. to what I, I could not wrap my head around it. The entire movie and my husband hadn't read the book, so he's just watching the movie. It's great. And the whole time I'm like, it's now, when I when I read a book and they make a movie of it, I don't usually see the movie. I, I, I just don't. I've kind of I'm kind of with you now. I think I've learned my lesson through you know a few different tries mm -hmm. of uh, it just didn't work for me because if it does, if it's not the person I have in my head, not that it has to be exact, but if it's nowhere close, it's hard for me to. Uh, yeah. Or when they change really big details. I don't get it. I'm like, why did you use that story then if you're going to really deviate from the story? Well, the thing is, like my book that was made into a movie. Which book was that? His Country Cinderella. And it was made into A Very Country Christmas. And then there's a sequel to it, A Very Country Wedding. And then there's another, another sequel, sequel, A Very Country Homecoming. But in the original, the original is very different from the made-for-TV movie. Just who because played the, of, hmm? who played the main characters in those? Because I think I've Grayson, seen it. I love country. Grayson Holt. Grayson Holt was the was the hero, and he's a good singer. I like I, the characters were perfect, 
And there again, I can't remember her name. B, and it starts with an S, was her, she's blonde. Deanna Carter was in it. She sang. She was his good friend. Oh, well, I know um, who Carter is. And I don't know if anyone's familiar with Heartland, but I love Heartland. And Michelle, um, I can't remember her last name, from that was in it as the agent. But the book was just very different. They changed the little boy to a little girl, probably because little girls are cuter. Um, they, <laughs> took, they took out um, a lot of the basis for the book. Um, the country mu music star was facing a lawsuit from a fan who had been at one of his concerts and got a heart attack. And that, that isn't in the movie at all. The movie's much lighter. We'll put it that way. But it's cute. It's really cute. I'm pretty sure, but like I like I said, I like um even now, I like cowboy romances. I I, I mean I, I am a pretty big romance reader. And there are certain subgenres I like sports romances and I like like Western cowboy romances. And I like other things, but those are probably the the two that like I can pick up Diana Palmer anytime. I can pick up, you know certain author, Linda Lale Miller, or however she says her name. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but you know, there's they certain ones. They were on the ne up TV network. And then the first two, I think were on Netflix last Christmas. Then I probably did. And my husband probably <laughs> <laughs> and, and alternated. His favorite thing to do is when I'm watching those shows, he will change the dialogue just to, he just does it to annoy me to be honest. <laughs> Um, yes, we probably definitely because I was really obsessed with the Christmas shows over um, on Netflix and Hulu um, this past year while we were all stuck at home. I was, yeah, yeah. I think. I <laughs> and the Up Network seems to show them every year. The first one came out three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. Okay. That was exciting. Yeah, that's really exciting. That's really cool. Cheryl said, I thought most of the people in One for the Money by Jay Ivanovich were people I wouldn't have chosen why I never watched the movie. The movie wasn't very good. And I love that series. That often happens. I mean, I no. don't think you can create in a movie necessarily the depth that you have in the book or yeah. follow the plot line. It's just too hard to get it all in. Yeah. And, you know, what they throw out are the little bitty details that sometimes really make the characters, at least to the reader, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, you know, because I don't know if you if you've, you know, read any of the Stephanie Plum series, the one she's talking about here. But, um, you know, the characters are the biggest part of that book. And although they were, of course, in the movie, they're some of their like really important things that made that character, that character, they couldn't include probably because of time. It's a two hour movie, you know I mean? So yeah. uh, it makes sense, but I thought that it lost a lot in translation. Absolutely. So, yes. so your, Oh, hold on. I agree. The movie did not work. Me too. So your newest Daisy book comes out in August. Is that correct? The end of August. The end, the end of August. Okay. It's a September release, but it comes out the end of August. Okay. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Hold on. Yes, Lee it said, is. Lee said, I hate when the, in, I hate when in the book, they frequently describe a main character as having flaming red hair. They mention it often in every book. And then the show movie has a girl with black hair. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> often happened with covers. Not for me. <laughs> Not with the mysteries. <clears throat> but with romances, you know, you, you describe the characters in the book, then the cover comes around and it's <laughs> different. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, how I hear a lot of people say that. And then Cheryl said, and then I think of uh, Tom Cruise, five foot six inches playing Jack Reacher <laughs> who's over six feet. Yeah. Fair enough. He is not Jack Reacher. <laughs> Everybody says that. I'm, I don't know anything about Jack Reacher, but I hear, two of the books. I hear everybody say that. That's so funny. <laughs> Hi, Cozy. Um, Cozy Reads Mystery um, started a Cozy Mystery uh, 
Facebook channel not too long ago. And um, we just started a uh, book club together. So oh, that's super right. that cozy mystery book club. So that's super exciting. So it is. It is. Yeah. Well, um, thank you for being with me. I don't know if you have any questions. Um, so August is the next book. The Caprice, mm -hmm. does it have one slated to come out? No, Caprice is done. Okay. Okay. Um, but you are scheduled to go with the Daisy Tea Garden through book 10. Is that right? That's right. Ten oh my books. gosh. That's super exciting. Yeah, super exciting. I'm, I'm anxious. The next one after Murder with Orange Pico. Let me see if I can show that again. Yeah, show that. Hold on. Let me take this one off. That is, I love the covers. I, I think that's a beautiful, I love all the colors in it. I love it. It's a great cover. So after this one, we have Murder with Darjeeling Tea. Nice. And then Murder with Earl Grey Tea. Oh, you already <laughs> know the names for them? Yeah, I don't know the last one yet. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow. I know, Cozy, 10 books. We were saying that, we were saying that earlier that 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 is quite a feat in um, Cozy Mysteries, especially now, I feel like. Yeah. 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 So, so I was thrilled. I was thrilled. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then writing. after that, you can write about the Toronto Villain Carnival and all will be well. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Someone eventually. Someone eventually. And I don't even, you know, want anything from it. You know, maybe just that they kill me in one of the books. I would like that. <laughs> I want to really want to be a victim in a book. Honey blonde hair with curls and glasses. There you exactly. go. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, in August or closer to August, if you'd like to come back on and chat about your, your book that's coming out, oh, sure. I'd love to have you. Sure. Anytime. I, yeah, would I, love, I would love to have you again. Um, I miss book you. signings. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. thank you so, so much for doing this and thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Yeah. It's been really, really fun. And so, so interesting. You had a lot of, um, interesting insight. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. So thank, thank you. you very much. And like I said, I might email you and see if, you know, Hey, your book's coming out. Do you want to come on? Absolutely. Okay. okay. All right, guys. Well, thanks everyone for coming. I had such a good time. Thank you, thank you again, Karen. Have a great day. You it was too. so nice meeting you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.